The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of terrifying imagination. Of all the great killers of history, perhaps the deadliest and most terrifying is the automobile. Nero, Attila the Hun, Lorenzo de' Medici, Bluebeard, even artillery fire and the ultimate, the atom bomb, at least have a purpose, a reason, a rationale. But the automobile maims or kills mindlessly senselessly. For example... This is old Long Jack here in the studio on a lonesome chap. The wet, foggy night. I speak Saying if you're all weak, we'll be able tonight. It's heavy, man, heavy. Oh, shut up, you fool. If you just let Big Daddy help you out, all you... You can't help me, Big Daddy. I'm just to hit something. Somebody. Split. I got a split. Our mystery drama, And Nothing But the Truth, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Arnold Moss. the accident we heard a few minutes ago, another statistic of the road, an innocent victim, a careless driver, the victim's family broken and lost, a young man whose carelessness had blighted a bright new manhood and a promising career, or was the driver lucky this time, lucky in a way far beyond his hope or expectation, we're about to find out with David, the young driver, as he paces his living room floor, waiting for his father to come home. Dad? David. David, what are you doing up at this hour? I didn't hear you come in. I thought you'd never get home. Where have you been? Well, now do I have to start answering to you for my whereabouts? What? What? Oh, you mean like mother? Yes, yes, like your mother. I'm sorry, Dad. Well, for your information, I was working, correcting term papers. It wasn't that I... David, I, I'm, I'm very tired. You all right, Dad? You look like you had uh, an attack or something. Well, don't be silly. I said I was tired. What? What's wrong with you? You've been drinking. I... Yes, I wish I hadn't, but I did oh, 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 okay, son. Take it easy. Whatever it is, we'll we'll work it out. Where's your sports car? Didn't you have it out tonight? Yes. I left it parked on the street. Well, you better put it away. There's no sense in leaving it out in this rain. Dad, I've got to talk to you. It's about the car. What about the car? I didn't know what to do. I hit the panic button. I ran. Well, what else did you hit? Someone. A man. I'm pretty sure. Down near the railroad, you know where the big curve comes around by the station opposite Franny's place? I think it was one of those old winos that hang around there. Dad, I swear I never saw him with all that rain and the fog. Was there anyone else around? I didn't see anyone. I should have stopped. But all I could think of was that I'd been drinking and the scholarship coming up. And if anything happened, it would kill Mom. And before I knew it, I was running away. I've been going crazy waiting for you to get home. I'm scared, too, but I guess I ought to go to the police. Does your mother know about this? No, no. Okay. When did it happen? Two o'clock, almost on the nose. Two this morning? Yeah. By the railroad, you say? Yeah, I just came off Stratfield, and I took the corner into the Big Ben on Hills Point. I, I get the picture. Okay. Now go in the kitchen and wait for me. 
And no matter what, don't let your mother get involved. Where are you going? I'm going to have a look at your car. Well, I'll come with you. You'll do as I say from here on in. Now, you go to the kitchen. I'll be right back. What are you going to do? I'm not sure yet. But just... Well, maybe there's a way to get off the spot. Is your mother still asleep? I guess so. She hasn't been down. There's a dent in your front right fender. Was that there before tonight? No. You sure? Yeah, I simonized the car yesterday. Does it look bad? Well, not to... Well, it must have been a... A glancing blow. You mean maybe it's going to be all right? Maybe. Oh, I don't think I could hurt him too bad. And a night like tonight, you know, oh, who'd be hanging around? It isn't going to be all that easy, David. They might be able to trace the car. How? You're missing a front right hubcap. There aren't that many Harley 584s in this town. So I'll have to give myself up. No, no, no. Let's figure this out. Was your mother up when you went out tonight? I don't know if she was asleep, but she wasn't downstairs. Well, then she didn't see what car you took. No? Did she see me leave? I mean, did she look out of the window or anything? No. She was she was just sitting in the big chair by the fireplace, crying. Crying? You know, the usual. Well, then I was off once again to the arms of another woman, hmm? Like that. Well, you don't believe all that talk, do you? Look, Dad... We've been down this road before. I'm not making any judgments. I'm not asking you to sit in judgment on me. I asked for a simple reaction between a father and a son. I, I... I'm sorry, David. I, I... I didn't mean to blow up. I guess we're both a little shook tonight. But you ought to know by now where I stand. It's just... Well, I know Mom gets a lot of screwy notions. But all the same, I'm sorry for her. She's so lost and... Well, I'm always afraid that any little thing might push her right over the edge. Like tonight. Oh, Dad, what am I going to do? That's what we're going to figure out right now. I've got a few more questions. You you say the accident happened at 2 o'clock or so, right? Just as I said, almost exactly. Now, how do you know that? I was listening to Long Jack, and he was just going into a last commercial before he went off the air. The disc he was spinning was just ending, and, well... When I hit the guy. What was the record? An oldie. Easy to love. And you hit this man just after you turned off Stratfield into Hills Point. Yeah. He suddenly stepped off the curb. Like out of nowhere. Now, how fast were you going? Gee, Dad, I... Now, come on, come on. Don't pussyfoot with me. Too fast. I took the corner pretty wide. Did you skid? Yeah, it, w it was pretty slick from the rain. And there was no one else around? No. You're sure? Yeah, I opened the door to look out. There was no one. That's why I lost my nerve and cut out. Well, I better get down and find out. You stay right where you are. It's after four. The longer I wait, the worse it will be You're for me. You're not going to be involved in this at all, David. What do you mean? I mean, you were driving the station wagon tonight. I was the one who was driving the sports car, and I'm going to the precinct house right now to report that I hit a man and left the scene of the accident. Dad, I can't let you do that. Don't be a fool. I'm not on the verge of getting a full scholarship to Harvard. I haven't been drinking. I'm not a teenager with two strikes against him as a driver to begin with. I'm a full college professor with a distinguished record who is coming home on a foul night with visibility almost zero, dead tired, after correcting 200 term papers. I can stand the gaff, and you can't. No, sir, Dad. I thank you, and I admire you, but I hope to God I'm enough of a man not to hide behind my father's pants. You'd better think of it as your mother's skirt. Your mother couldn't care less what happens to me, but you're a different story. You get in big trouble over this, and it could kill her. We're still driver over that, that edge we both worry about. But, Dad, I... Don't argue. This is the way it's going to be. You just let me handle it, and you keep your mouth shut no matter what happens. I don't know what to say. I'll tell you what you're going to say. Nothing. Nothing to anyone. But, Mom... Least of all to your mother. Okay, Dad, if that's the way you want it. Oh, how can I thank you?
You're some kind of a guy. No, 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 David. Just the most sensible way out of a bad situation. I'd better get down to the police. Don't wait up. I may be a while. It's still raining. Oh, uh, you got the keys. Sorry, right here. And thanks, Dad, for everything. This will all work out for the best. Oh, I, I think I hear your mother moving about. If she comes down, what do I say? What we've agreed on is the truth. But I've gone to the precinct house to report that I'm a hit-and-run driver, right? Right. I'll never forget what you're doing for me. And for your mother. For all of us. Grant, is that you? No, Mom, it's me, David. Oh, I thought I heard your father come home a little while ago. What are you doing at the front door? Why, well, uh... I better calm down. What's going on? I heard voices, angry voices. That was uh, Dad and me. Not angry, we were just discussing something. Then where's Grant now? Did... Yes, I heard a door slam. Did he go out again? Yes. Not another woman. Not two in one night. <laughs> Why don't you give him a break once? He was at the college correcting papers. Then where's he off to now? Mom, it's kind of damp in the hall. Let, let's go into the living room and sit down. Don't tell me he's finally taken off for good with one of his bed partners. Oh, Mother, have a heart. Why can't you see what a right guy Dad is? Maybe I've known him too long. So what errand took him out of the house again at 4.20 in the morning? He's gone to the local precinct to... to confess to a hit and run. Yes, madam, I understand. I'll have some officers on the way immediately. Well, these are experts in the bomb squad. Oh, yes, ma'am, all the latest equipment. Thank you, ma'am. We do our best at the police department. Full moon time again, huh, Lieutenant? Oh, yeah, he saw the crazies are out on the broom tonight. There was some dingling, just saw a UFO land in her backyard. How was your hit and run? Oh, no sweat. Some old wino stumbled off the curb, got his rear end creased, and they took him to St. Elizabeth's. Anything on the general bulletin? Nah, it's small stuff. Muggy in the second precinct. It's a gas station hold up in the pit. Uh-huh. I want to hear something new. That's a 12th. Nah, nothing. A code to see the man. Some citizen reports a smell of gas in his apartment house, possible suicide. It's nothing worth our brains. What's that in your hand? Oh, it's a hubcap. Clue from the scene of the hit and run. Oh, let me have a look in. Mm-hmm. Hmm. English make. Probably from a Harley. Or uh, some sport car like that. Found on the scene? Uh-huh. About 75 yards away. No proof it had anything to do with the hit and run. How's the victim? Conditioned fair when the ambulance picked him up. He only got struck a glancing blow. Well, that still don't make no never mind. The perpetrator cut out. I want him brought in. Oh, so do I. But it may be a little rough. Even if we find the car this belongs to, it doesn't prove it was lost hitting the victim. Could have been loose and just uh, fallen off. So you think we don't make the guy, huh? My educated guess is that the odds are not so high. Yeah, Brady, what is it? You don't say. Why with you now, huh? Well, how about that? Yeah, yeah, bring him right in. Educated guess, huh? <laughs> I was wrong. Couldn't be wronger. A guy named Williams just came to the desk and confessed to making the hit and run. He's on the way in. You and he should get on together just Andy. Guy's a college professor. father hit someone with the sports car tonight? But that's impossible. How can you say that, Mom? Because he wasn't driving that car tonight. How do you know? You didn't see him leave? No, but I was awake when he drove in, and I could swear I know he was driving the station wagon. A father's sacrifice for his son. Surely a noble if perhaps misguided gesture. The question, of course, is 
Should a young man or anyone be encouraged to evade responsibility? And will this simple act of altruism remain just that? We'll find out shortly when we return with Act Two. A precinct house in a large city, even at the best of times, is never the most prepossessing spot in the world. In the dog hours of the morning, dusty, dingy, tired paint peeling from the walls, half-empty coffee containers with cigar and cigarette butts floating in them, it is certainly one of the most depressing, or so Grant feels as he dictates his false confession. But as I say, I was dog-tired, very sleepy. It was only when I was putting the car away in the garage and I noticed a dent in the fender and found that one of the hubcaps was missing that I began to realize with horror that I might have hit an animal, an opossum or something. It never occurred to me that it might have been a human being. Well, I, I would have returned right away, but my wife, who has not been well recently, well, she, she, she was up. She was waiting for me, and I, I didn't want to alarm her. And so I, I coaxed her back to bed and to sleep, and I came here just as soon as I could. And this was uh, what time, Professor? Almost exactly two o'clock. And you could fix the time because you were listening to Long Jack on the car radio, and he was signing off. Uh, you like uh, acid rock, Mr. Williams? I beg your pardon? Acid rock. You know, the big hard beat, loud enough to blow your mind. Oh, no, 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 I don't. Uh, why? Well, that's Long Jack's bag. It's most of what he plays, you know. I didn't figure you'd uh, dig his scene. Yeah, well, I, I, I didn't. I turned on the radio to keep me awake, not for music appreciation. Uh -huh. As it happened, I didn't find the music particularly mind-blowing. As a matter of fact, I remember the last number he was playing just before he signed off was Easy to Love, and I wouldn't call that exactly... Contemporary. The main point is that you made the turn at two o'clock. You felt a jarring feeling, which jives with our information, right, Rizzo? Right, Lieutenant. I see. A victim left Franny's restaurant, 518 Hills Point Road, at approximately two minutes to 2 a.m. Because victim was discovered by George Bates, post office employee, <clears throat> some two minutes later. He heard a car drive away, but due to adverse weather conditions, could not see it or make any identification. Victim was Dominic Capello, unemployed, 61 years old. Well, I, I, I hope he's all right. Uh, he's at the hospital. We don't know the extent of the uh, injuries yet. I, I, I feel terrible, that poor old man. Uh, Professor Williams, let me uh, point out something. From your story and our evidence, there is no clear-cut evidence that you did hit this man. Now, if I were you, before I went any further, I'd get a lawyer. Oh, there's no need for a lawyer. I, I'm quite willing to face my responsibilities. If you'll prepare a statement for me, I'd be very glad to sign it. All right. I'll leave you here with Patrolman Foster, who'll type up a statement. You just check it over when he's finished, and then if you still want to, you can sign. I'll be right back. Ah, uh, Lieutenant, uh, see you a minute outside. Okay. All right, Rick, so what's fighting you? I think the guy's lying. About what, for Pete's sake? Why would he lie? To cover up. Cover up who? How do I know? His daughter, son, wife. Now, why would he want to take the rap for them? Ah, that's what'll take some digging to find out. Oh, boy. Fifteen precincts in this city, four detective divisions, not to get stuck with you. You want to make a federal case out of one sneaky little hit and run where the guy comes in like a good citizen and confesses and just for once make the job easy? Uh, what do you got to do? Go looking for trouble? Now, Lieutenant, it isn't just the few small discrepancies. It's the whole psychology of the man. Psychology? That's all I need. The new breed. Now, look, Rizzo. Will you for once just forget the college education and get back in there and have that statement signed, sealed and delivered and stop making waves? <laughs> Mother, please, will you let well enough alone? I've kept quiet about too many things for far too long, but I can't let this go. I know your father wasn't driving the sports car tonight. Okay. Okay, so he wasn't. So you know what that means. Oh, my darling, I... You want to get me locked up? No, of course not. But why should it come to that? You don't know yet if you really hit anyone or hurt them. 
I'm not kidding myself. When I pulled away, I tried to tell myself nothing had happened. But now it's all on the table, and I know that guy got hurt. And I'm scared. I'm scared of what they could do to me. Darling, there's nothing to be scared of in being honest, owning up. It was an accident. David, please. Will you let me go? I'm only trying to help. Oh, sure. Some help you are. I don't understand you, Mother. Look what Dad's willing to do for me. And all you want is for me to turn myself in. I want you to be honest. <laughs> this is for laughs. I mean, I... Look. Dad went down there to take the blame so he could protect you as well as me. Protect me? Yes. He... He said it would kill you if anything happened to me. Grant was worried about me? Yes. Don't you ever believe it. Mom, how can you be so bitter? Look what he's done for me. He's got to have an angle. That's unfair. I know you and Dad have problems. I'm not going to try to make any judgments about Oh, it. but you do. You make them every day in spite of yourself. And always against me. Mother, I've had just about as much of this as I can take. You know, the, the curious thing is that I know you love me in spite of everything. Just give me a moment. What is it? <laughs> I don't stand much chance, do I? I spend so much time upstairs with... with myself. Very lonely with just yourself. I'm a woman not quite able to cope. <laughs> a woman with hallucinations. Is it... It's something out of Dickens. Living among cobwebs of near insanity and the ghosts of what never was. Mother. Look, it's time I told you. Time I try to tell somebody. I'm a prisoner with a life sentence. Because... I, because I can't stop loving. To everyone else, I'm the ghost. But the truth is that the real corruption lies rotting in, in the very man we both love. David, I don't want to ever see you become like him. I would rather see you dead. That's why I want you to take your own troubles on your own shoulders. Mom, don't you think you ought to lie down? I mean, you're no, not... It's easy, isn't it, to find a scapegoat to make someone else responsible? Poor, mad, wasted Marion Williams. Married to that intelligent, handsome man. Respected by his faculty. Worshipped by his students. Particularly the girls. Oh, yes. Particularly the girls. Oh, Mother, for Pete's sake. No, this time you don't stop me. I loved him so much I forgave all those early affairs. The young children invaded, cheapened. I saved him. I went to those girls. I begged them off. And after you came, the pattern continued. I began to retreat farther and farther. I had the money. That's why I could always keep him. And I couldn't stop loving him. That was the saddest part, wasn't it, David? What? I was the one who ruined him. Without me to cover for him, he'd have been found out long ago. So, you see... I don't know what you mean, Mom. I can't discuss what you've been talking about. But, but that has nothing to do with what Dad is doing at this moment. I've been drinking. I, I, I couldn't have gone to the police. Dad can handle this. Please, leave it alone. And let you spoil yourself just as he did. The rot spread so fast, David. <laughs> The incident was totally minor in mine till I returned home, found that there was a dent in my front fender. Uh, well, I've read this through, Lieutenant, and there's nothing here that isn't consonant with my, uh, my earlier confession. It's a formality, Professor. I prefer to have you read it aloud before you sign the statement. If you insist. It's better, Professor Williams. There is much more. Go ahead. It's quite evident that I must have been responsible for striking with my automobile one Dominic Capello 61 at approximately 2 a.m. on the above date. This statement is a true and unsolicited confession of my responsibility. And Ah, uh, excuse me, Lieutenant. Close the door, Reed, so come on in and hold it. You can go out, Professor. In witness whereof, I set my hand... Uh, if you have a pen, I'll sign. Lieutenant. What is it now, Rita? Have you warned the professor again that he should have legal representation? No, I, I don't need her. Sorry. I'll have to warn you, sir, that you may. The man was hit, just died in the hospital without regaining consciousness. It isn't just an accident anymore. It could be homicide. Oh, come on, Rita. Oh, manslaughter. 
But it does change things, Professor. If you sign this, I'll have to book you. There's a problem of bail. You should have a lawyer before you sign. Well, nonsense. I, I want to sign. Let's not waste any more time, and, and then I'll call my lawyer. All right. You take the research with your witnesses. Yeah. You'll have to be fingerprinted, Professor. Whatever you say, Lieutenant. Foster will take you to a phone first to call your lawyer about bail. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Detective Rizzo. Don't mention it. All right, now, Rizzo, don't say it. I've got to. Something's out of kilter. I never saw a man so anxious to get arrested in my life. He just wants to get it over with and get back to bed. Now, who does it? It's wrong, Lieutenant. It's wrong. A cool, collected individual like that doesn't go around hitting panic buttons and taking a powder out of a bad situation. Now, Joe, drop it. Lay off. Don't give me any more of the psychology. I'm just a plain flat foot who came up through the ranks by sticking to one thing, facts. Let's give the guy a vote of thanks for coming in. My psychology is we leave it lay, huh? You got any other hunches? Save them for the ponies. Okay? Okay. What's on the bulletin, Rita? Ah, oh, same old noise, nothing special. They picked up that mugger in the second, a repeater. What's happening with Professor Williams? Prof huh? Williams, Williams, the professor. You remember the guy we spent most of the night with? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he got fingerprinted and his lawyer sprung him. He's going home. Hey, uh, look at this, Lieutenant. What? That code two. See the man in the 12th? That suicide was no false alarm. There was a DOA. Only now it looks like homicide. They figured the girl was strangled before the gas was turned. Oh, what do I care about some dame in the 12th? The 7th is my baby. Let the 12th worry about their headaches. I'm taking you off. Marion, for the last time, you stay out of this or I'll... You what, Grant? Kill me? You did that a long time ago. The only reason I clung to any shred of life was because of David. And a fine little mama's boy you made out of him. The moment my back is turned, he runs to you, he blurts out the whole oh, thing. Oh, no, he didn't. I figured out what happened myself. I saw you drive away in the station wagon. Oh, why can't you mind your own business? Because I don't trust you. And I want David to be a man and stand on his own feet. Will you get something through that bird brain of yours? The man who was hit is dead. David had been drinking. You won't be emancipating your son. You'll be burying him in jail. Is that what you want? You're hurting me, Grant. Is that what you want? Or will you keep your mouth shut and allow me to do something for my own son? Please, let me go. Not until I get your promise to leave things as they are. I, I don't want David to go to jail. All right, then. I can trust you. Yes. I only wish I trusted you. You've never done one unselfish thing in your life, Grant. I only wish I knew what it is you expect to gain this time. A torturing dilemma for a mother and father. Is the father right to protect his son? Or the mother to feel it would be better for him to take his medicine? So many other questions pose themselves. Questions which will be answered when I return shortly with Act Three. Those questions I mentioned. Of course, Marion Williams would feel herself hurt by her husband's interest in other women. Or is that all in her mind? A figment fantasized by her obviously shaky mental stability. But then, there is also the doubts of Detective Sergeant Rizzo. Let's follow him for a moment. Yes? Uh, is uh, Professor Williams at home? No, he has classes this morning at the university. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, excuse me, I'm uh, Detective Rizzo. This is my shield. I wonder if I could talk to uh, Mrs. Williams for a moment? Uh, I'm sorry, but but my mother, she's still asleep. She's kind of an invalid. Oh, and it, oh well, and I wouldn't think of disturbing her. You're uh, Professor Williams' son, huh? Uh, yes. 
Well, then how about you take the chain off the door and I step in and ask you a couple of questions? Uh, have you got a warrant? Have a warrant? <laughs> now, what would I want a warrant for? Look, don't let me be in a cop scare you. Oh, I'm not scared. You, uh, always keep a chain on when you open the front door? Uh, no, uh... Look, uh, I'm sorry. You're wasting your time. My father told me not to answer any questions. Oh, oh, then you, uh, you know about the accident last night, huh? I... Yes, but... I'm sorry, I've got to close the door. Uh, you drive, kid. Sir, your foot's in the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it is. Anyway, I figure you drive since you got a license. I looked it up in the bureau. Would you move your foot, please? Uh, hold it just a minute. <laughs> Here's your newspaper, huh? You might want to read about the accident. Page four. You know, check out the details. Thanks for the paper. Sure. Here. Will you let it go, please? You, uh, weren't out driving yourself last night, were you? I'll take the paper. Yeah. And now I know my hunch is right. Come on, come on. Where are you? Hello? David. David, where were you? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I was just bringing down Mother's lunch tray. You should never answer the phone. Any mail? Any phone calls? Uh, just a couple of ads. No phone calls. Oh. There was, uh, well, we had a visitor. Who? A detective Rizzo. What did he want? He said he wanted to talk to you. Then when I said you weren't home, he wanted to talk to Mom. Well, you didn't let him. No, no. She was asleep, so... He said he wanted to ask me some questions. Good Lord. It's all right. I didn't let him in, and I didn't tell him anything. Well, I hope you didn't. He had no right, no, 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 no right to... D David... David, you're sure you didn't... No, no, I didn't say anything, but I'm scared. I think he knows. I think he's guessed that no, I... No, no, listen to me, David. I don't care what he knows or what he suspects. He can't prove anything if we just stick to our story. Now, you get this straight, David. I'll kill you if you let me down. No, no, I... I, 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 I didn't mean that. I... I... I'm just thinking about you. I, I don't want your life spoiled before it begins. Now, you just remember. A man has been killed. The real truth comes out, you're in trouble. Bad trouble. I know. Just so you remember, both you and your mother. Okay. But supposing that detective turns up again... He won't. You just leave that to me. Just leave everything to me. I will. And don't think I'm not grateful. Oh, I don't know how I can ever pay you back. You just sit tight and stick to our story. That's all the payment I need. I quite understand, Professor. Detective Rizzo exceeded his orders. I promise you he won't bother your family again. I'm sorry if I lost my temper, Lieutenant. I don't blame you, sir. You'd feel better if you could get a load of how I'm going to lose mine. Good afternoon, Professor. Detective Rizzo, check in yet. All right, tell him to lug his rear end here on the double. I'm going to bust him right down a patrol. You, uh, looking for me, Lieutenant? Yeah, come on in and close the door. Uh, Jarvis on the desk tells me the Williams guy was on the phone having a fit. Didn't I tell you to stop making waves? Well, yes, Did Lieutenant, I tell you the Williams case was closed? It can't be closed as long as there's a charge. That's up to the judge. Now, we've done our part. We have a statement and a confession. That's all we're supposed to provide. Uh-huh. A phony confession. What does that mean? Now, look. That professor has a kid. Around 17, 18, huh? I talked to him today. I'll lay you dollars to donuts. He was the one driving the car when that you accident... You have any proof of that? No, but give me an hour with that kid and I'll crack Why, this case. Detective Rizzo, strong arm methods from a member of the new breed? I thought today's young cop was exchanging the third degree for a college degree. You know I didn't mean anything like that, but if you just give me a chance Why? to get to the bottom... Why would a respected college professor, a guy as prominent in this town as he is, why would he risk his reputation to cover up something his son did? I don't know. I mean, this guy's a teacher. The last thing in the world he'd do is let his son run out on a responsibility? Yeah, that's the way I see it. Psychologically. Oh, psychologically. Now, let's not get tangled up with that bull again, huh? 
We have a confession, Detective Rizzo. Lieutenant, give me a break. I got the strongest hunch. It isn't any stronger than mine. And mine is, if you don't let this lay like I told you, you're going to be back in your boondockers walking a beat as far uptown as these city limits stretch. Okay, Detective Second Grade, is this case closed? Well, like you say, the case is closed. <laughs> study, Mom. You all right? I, I just want to talk a minute. What are you doing? Just catching up on some homework. Uh, David, that, that man, that detective you said uh, came here, are you sure all he asked you about was uh, the accident? Look, Mom, that's, I mean, I promised Dad I wasn't going to talk about it anymore. So did you. It's a closed uh, book. We're going to have to open it again. Did he ask you about anything else than the accident? <sighs> no, but... Look, uh... David... You have got to go to the police and tell them the truth. Now, I promised Dad... David, don't make me go. You promised him, too. You don't understand. Everything's changed. He has to be stopped. There must be some justice. Mom, why don't you go upstairs? Oh, look, don't, don't treat me like an invalid or worse, a half-wit. Have you read the newspaper that you brought up to me today? No. Do you know a girl named Susan Rowland? Susan... Yeah, yeah, kind of. I, I mean, she was uh, a class ahead of me at school. I guess I rapped with her here and there, but we never dated or anything like that. Is that her picture? Yes. Front page. What happened? Read the story and find out carefully. Then you'll know why your father is so anxious to keep you quiet. David, you... You're going to find out why the truth has to be told. Lieutenant Klamath here. How's everything with the talk, John? Ah, uh, you know how it goes with lieutenants in the police department, from bad to worse. A little favor, George. Name it, you got it. Uh, you see the DOA we had on the bulletin, possible suicide, now definitely homicide. The picture in the morning paper? Yeah, that's the one. Susan Rowland, 19 years old, college student. We're running a routine check on all our acquaintances. You got a make on anyone? No. Fingerprints all over the place, but not even a warm lead. Uh-huh. Well, what can I do? Ah, uh, well, I'm running down blind alleys. Like in her address book is the name of a guy, Grant Williams, domiciled your precinct. <clears throat> she seemed to have been in one of his classes at the university. Could you spare a man to check it out? John, I don't even have to. I'll close one lead for you. What time did your little student get strangled? Uh, well, Emmy puts it at around 2 o'clock. At 1.55, she called her mother to say she was pregnant, and the guy who did it was with her. She started to give his name. The connection was broken. At 2.15, a prowl car responded to a code 2, suspicion of suicide by gas. They broke in, turned off the gas, but the girl had already been dead 10 or 15 minutes. So, <clears throat> 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, eh? Well, that lets out Grant Williams. Two o'clock, our side of town, 45 minutes away. He was involved in a traffic accident. He's already booked. Ah, uh, one down, how many to go? Thanks, George. Sorry to bother you. How long ago did he leave? Too late for you to stop him. Oh, I ought to kill you for this. Like you did that poor little girl. No, 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 I, I, I didn't mean to. The, the little idiot refused to have an abortion. She wanted me to marry her. Marry her, for heaven's sake. Oh, and divorce your meal ticket. Marion, Marion, please, please help me. Oh, not anymore. Anyway, I couldn't even if I wanted to. But, David, maybe I can still stop David. If you could, you'd still have to stop me. <laughs> And everything my father testified to in his statement was true. Except that it was me who was driving the car, not my father. I hit that man, panicked, and drove off. Well, don't look at me, Lieutenant. I have nothing to say. You wouldn't have to, read so. I know the boy's telling the truth. Yeah, you were right all along. I had a phone call about a half an hour. I demand to see my son. It's all right, Sergeant. Let him in. 
What is it, Professor Williams? David, I don't want you to say one word until I've talked to you and we can get legal advice. It's too late, Dad. I've said everything I have to say. You don't know what you're doing. The first time in my life, I do. I'm taking care of myself. How could you do it, Dad, to a nice kid like Susan? I don't know what you're talking about. I can clear that up, Professor. We're booking you for the murder of Susan Rowland. Oh, you can't. I have an alibi. Correction. You had an alibi. But I'm not guilty. And you can't prove it. We will. With your help. But what do you mean? It's ironic, isn't it? If you hadn't walked in here and made a false confession, we might never have had your fingerprints. That's what's going to nail you. You provided us with a whole set to match up. You were just a little too clever. You managed to hang yourself. All right, take him out and book him, Jarvis. Dad, I... Let him go, kid, huh? Let him go. There's nothing you can do for him. Now you go on with Foster. Let him type up your statement, huh? What's going to happen to him? He'll be found guilty, as he ought to. And me? You've taken a beating you know, already. It's an accident. Won't be too tough. And things should be looking up from now on for both you and your mother. Go on, kid. Okay, Lieutenant. Well, I guess I ought to start to eat my hat, Reed, so, huh? But I'd rather just say I'm sorry. Oh, no. Me too, Lieutenant. This is one time I wish I could just have been wrong. When you're a cop as long as I've been, there'll be a lot more. I wish I could say you get used to it. Come on. Let's try the squad room coffee. All right, Bad as it is, it's better than the taste I got in my mouth right now. So Marion's intuition was right, along with Rizzo's. And David made the first long stride towards being a man. Something else I'd like to say about that, uh, but I'll return shortly. Not every story must have a moral, but I believe this one has. Not that crime doesn't pay, that's obvious, but that the acceptance of responsibility is a cornerstone of life. The Apostle John has saved us Jesus' words, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Our cast included Arnold Moss, Ralph Bell, Clarissa Blackburn, Billy Redfield, and Christopher Tabori. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. FM, Seattle. Time, 10 o'clock. CBS News. After six years of hassle, Interior Secretary Rogers Morton has signed the permit for the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, 
I'm Jim Kilpatrick reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Construction is set to begin this spring, but oil will not flow through the giant 800-mile pipeline for another three years. Even after completion, the pipeline will not reach its full capacity till about 1980, when it could be carrying about 2 million barrels of oil a day. Secretary Morton said the right-of-way permit allows the government to halt any construction activity that threatens the environment or public health and safety. Oddly enough, a 7,000-gallon oil spill was reported on Alaska's North Slope Wednesday. Cleanup operations are underway. Oil company spokesmen say the spill occurred when a valve was accidentally left open. Arab oil ministers will meet February 14th. One topic expected to be discussed is the possible lifting of the oil embargo against the United States. Egyptian President Sadat says only the Arab oil-producing countries can decide whether to end their embargo on oil shipments to the United States. Sadat had said earlier, now that the Americans have made a gesture, the Arabs should make one too, referring to the lifting of the oil embargo. Sadat just returned from, to Egypt from a tour of the other Arab states and reportedly asked the oil producers to reconsider their boycott. More news after this. <laughs> You don't see many people putting salt in their beer nowadays. Not that there's anything wrong with salt on radishes or french fries, but man, not in the king of beers. Truth is, the only thing salt can do for Budweiser is make it salty. An unwise thing to do to the only beer in America that's beechwood aged. Unsalted Budweiser has become the most popular beer in the world. That's because in brewing Bud, the Budweiser brewmaster goes all the way for a taste a smoothness, a drinkability you'll find in no other beer at any price. And something else you can take without a grain of salt. The fact that when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. The Senate Watergate Committee has decided to hold two more weeks of hearings. The subject will be campaign contributions to Mr. Nixon's re-election committee from billionaire Howard Hughes and dairy industry cooperatives. The president's friend, Charles B.B. Rebozo, may be called to testify. The decision to continue the hearings was split along party lines. Democrats, yes. Republicans, no. Republican Senator Howard Baker of Tennessee. I think that there's an honest difference of opinion in the committee. We've gone all these months in a very, very difficult, a very tedious, and a very delicate political atmosphere. We've avoided political polarization in the committee. I think the committee has served well. It has not always been successful, but I think on balance it has been very successful. Senator Howard Baker. Bing Crosby remains hospitalized in California, but his doctors say he'll be going home soon. Ken Ackerman of KCBS reports. Bing Crosby's personal physician says the singer is anxious to return home to the Hillsborough mansion to continue recovery. According to Dr. Stanley Handling... Mr. Crosby is recuperating very well after his operation. The exact date of discharge isn't known, but he should be home within a week to con continue his convalescence and recuperation at home and plan for the months ahead with his usual activities. Those activities include plans for a fishing trip and a flight to the winter home in Mexico. Dr. Handling says Crosby has been responding well to medication, but the exact diagnosis of his lung ailment has yet to be completed. Five laboratories around the country, including the Communicable Disease Center in Atlanta, are analyzing culture samples of a malady believed caused from the singer-inhaled fungus-laden dust in Africa. This is Ken Ackerman for CBS News, San Francisco. This is KIXI AM and FM Stereo, Seattle, 11 o'clock. CBS News. New figures from the oil industry show the shortage is growing. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. The American Petroleum Institute, an oil industry organization, says crude oil imports continued to drop last week and refinery operations went down with them. In spite of an increase in imports of refined oil products, total oil imports have dropped from 7.1 million barrels a day in early November to about 4.9 million barrels now. 
Economist Walter Heller offers some thoughts on the energy shortage, emphasizing the importance of America becoming self-reliant for its energy sources. We have to develop ready reserves of oil in this country so that the Arab countries can never put us over a barrel again. Uh, we should never import more oil than we can afford to do without. And the only way to do that, uh, that I can see, is to develop our continental shelf, which is our oil, the people's oil, and see to it that that stands as a reserve. I'll have more news after this message. I'm High Brown, producer of Radio Mystery Theater. We're in our third week of original radio dramas, and I'm glad to report we are not the only ones who are excited about it. A listener in Texas writes, it's the best thing to happen to radio in years. We'd like your comments, too. Right now, we're in the last week of drawings for valuable prizes, 50 of them. Two AM-FM stereophonos, two travel clock radios, and 46 anthologies of modern suspense. To be eligible, just send us your name and address. Add your comments if you like. The address, Mystery Theater, Box 50, Radio City Station, New York, 10019. That's Box 50, Radio City Station, New York, 10019. Entries must be postmarked no later than Saturday, January 26th, or for good everywhere unless locally prohibited. It's dark in the morning hours when millions of Americans get up and get going due to the resumption of daylight savings time early this month. There have been some problems, as we hear in this report from Ike Siemens in Miami. The Dade County, Florida School Board may have become the first local or state body to appeal to Congress to end daylight saving time during the winter. The reason? Since it began three weeks ago, 13 elementary school students on their way to school in the pre-dawn darkness have been hit by cars. Last year, just 14 were injured during the entire nine-month session. The problem is that many elementary schools in the Miami area begin classes at 8 a.m., which is before dawn. Now the board is attempting to push back the starting time to 9 o'clock in the wake of the rash of accidents. Many parents have reacted by sending their children to classes late rather than have them on the streets in the dark. Statewide, there have been at least two elementary school students killed in the past three weeks under similar circumstances. Ike Siemens for CBS News, Miami. The U.S. government is thinking about importing wheat from Canada to make sure Americans have enough. Record high wheat exports and low reserves are being mentioned as causes of a potential wheat shortage in this country. In spite of the situation, the Department of Agriculture says there is no danger of an actual shortage of bread in the United States. President Nixon is quoted as telling a group of Southern congressmen that it's unthinkable that he will resign and that he intends to fight down to the wire. Earlier, another congressman quoted the president as saying he is going to, in Mr. Nixon's words, fight like hell. The congressman, Republican Peter Frelinghuysen of New Jersey, said the president told him he will not consider resignation. The Ford Foundation said Wednesday night it is going to withdraw financial support from public television after a final major grant of around $40 million. David M. Davis of the Ford Foundation says public TV has been able to find sufficient other means of support. Since 1951, the Ford Foundation has given about $250 million to public TV. The Washington Post reports that former Vice President Spiro Agnew is working on a novel but has already been turned down by one major New York publisher. The Post reports says Agnew's novel is about a vice president programmed for disaster by the Chinese communists. Post Society columnist Maxine Cheshire quotes the publisher as saying, I'm not sure I'd want to publish Agnew unless he wrote Ulysses. Doug Poling, CBS News.